does the Finnish slash European legislation currently, does it create or hinder or new business opportunities in Finland regarding cloud computing? There is no uh, uh, such legislation in force in Europe or Finland that would specifically regulate cloud computing. We have general uh, uh, compliance requirements regarding uh, data protection, uh, uh, bookkeeping materials, uh, health materials and so forth. And naturally all those uh, compliance requirements have to be met also by cloud computing services used by companies or entities. So in that sense um, there are not kind of uh, specific hinders for using cloud computing but but uh, it's quite clear that, that uh, ex most of the existing cloud computing services are not prepared to, 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 to be compliant. They are not, uh, more usually it seems that they are usually not, uh, uh, at least uh, from the outset, uh, able to provide the information needed by, for, by the customers to, be, to make sure that yes, we are compliant if we are using this cloud, cloud service. So in that sense, the legislation complicates uh, uh, to, uh, uh, and uh, taking into use of cloud services, but I don't think it's the fault of the cloud <coughs> legislation. It's the fault of cloud services that are not kind of they don't meet the standard required standards so far. The question about create and hinder new business, and um, whenever there is someone hindering new business, it's an opportunity to make new business and. Uh, I think... Um, you mean the law firms? <laughs> law firms, <laughs> but also sometimes um, if you have a solution that actually works between two countries that no one else managed to create yet, uh, that might be uh, something that you can help other countries, because this is not the typical Finland-only problem, this is everywhere. Mm -hmm. So if we find a technical and legal construction that everyone can live with, and that's the thing with Finland, as I understand it, that it's extra... Um, it, you're really on the high high end on on on, on demands here uh, on legal uh, on, on data protection and things like that. So if you can make it, then you have a business on everyone else that have as high and lower demands. If you understand what I mean. Um, yes. So. <laughs> I told you I won't answer anything because there's a lawyer here next. <laughs> legal questions. Uh, I, I think. In my, in my opinion, uh, not, not really uh, making any stands on the, on the status of the legislation. I think, I think the European legislation actually gives you an opportunity to, to create new business, uh, even in cloud services. And the reason why I say that is, is kind of twofold. Uh, one is the European Union legislation within the, the EU countries is, is pretty standard, it's pretty harmonized in, in issues that have to do with things like data governance and, and so on. And it's also quite stable. And when, when businesses are looking for a risk, or companies or organizations are looking for, for the risk of, of creating new business, one thing that they're looking for is stability. And stability in, in legislation is one of the things that, that, uh, that is always an issue when you think about creating new services. So that's one side of it. The second side of it is that the EU legislation when it comes to uh, data privacy and data governance and, and so on is probably one of the most strict in the world. So it is, in a sense, it is a, a quite a good uh, test case or test bed to start creating services like this. It, it means that they're, they're probably going to be uh, okay for use elsewhere as well if they pass the, the, the European legislation. But again, like, like somebody said, um, it is, to a large extent, it is a question of knowing the legislation, what the requirements are, and then applying that knowledge to, to whatever type of a service you're, you're going to be providing. That is a big issue at the moment. Yeah, I would also like to include uh, the uh, responsibility of the customer. I mean, the customer also has to know what's going on. Customer needs to know 
what, what part of their data is, is uh, in which category. We, we are not able, in, in every case, we are not able to know that. Because customer is the best expert on their business. Yeah, I, could say, I mean, the, the research data or, or research activity is not different from other activity in this sense. I mean, how it is regulated by, by law. Uh, but one could say something there about the cloud. I mean, even though it's, it's nothing new, and as you pointed out, that there's no specific law concerning cloud computing, and it's probably not necessary at all. But uh, the use of, of the cloud uh, is, uh, will increase certain usage or certain uh, usage patterns that are regulated need that in, in the law, in the meaning that uh, it's much more data that passes over national borders there are or between organizations and uh, also the facts that data get uh, aggregate uh, you uh, terms of personal records and these kind of things could unforeseen cause problems in this matter so. uh, and coming back to this uh, customer responsibility uh, it is of course the customer that has to know what is allowed to do with certain data and that, that is the, the in, the, in the ownership of the customer. But uh, it is also part of the cloud concept here that the customer might not always be totally certain where is my data going. Yeah? I store it in the cloud of Microsoft here. But is that in Dublin or uh, Delaware somewhere? I don't know. Or do I know as a customer? Can I answer that? <laughs> sure. Security person's standard answer depends. Uh, for certain services, yes, you do know. For some other services, no, you don't know. We, 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 won't, we won't give any guarantees on where, where the data will, will be stored. But for some services, we will uh, give that guarantee. I have a question for you. <laughs> now, if you say that to a customer who's requiring, who's requiring the knowledge of the location of the data, you, and you say you, you just don't know, uh, there's no deal, right? right? It depends. That's the standard answer. Um, in some cases, yeah, sure. It, there, there would be no deal. If we can't guarantee uh, an answer to the customer, a satisfactory answer to the customer, to any question that they ask, it means that they're not gonna buy the service from us. In, in a lot of cases, uh, what, we can, what, we, what we can do uh, with the customer is uh, find out whether it actually really does make a difference to them uh, where the data will be stored or whether it actually does not make any difference to them. Again, we come back to the problem of data classification. When, when, it, when it comes to organiza data, uh, organizations' uh, data, data that organizations use and, and, and store for a particular purpose, uh, they generally know whether they are willing to store it. Uh, if our answer is no, we don't, we're not going to tell you where it is going to be stored. I think so. One of the real problems in that is all that uh, uh, the location of the data uh, might basically be very hard to be understood by the customer if, for instance, it is stored in Microsoft Silverlight or other peer-to-peer -peer kind of environment. So it's, uh, in, in some cases, it, it becomes totally irrelevant you can't say to your customer that it's irrelevant where your data is. So the kind of virtual location and <coughs> uh, scientific explanation of that and how is it encrypted and uh, controlled, that, that's one of the hard parts.